This virus is costing us more than lives. So much of our work and leisure has slowed or stopped. The price we're paying is enormous. As the second wave arrives, the government says protecting life's a priority. But measures that protect life threaten the economy, and they're expected to save that too. Would the Prime Minister reassure us all and my constituents in North East Derbyshire that the primary focus of the government remains on protecting both lives and, just as importantly, livelihoods? Prime Minister. Uh, yes, indeed, Mr Speaker. My honourable friend can certainly reassure his uh, constituents. Some are sceptical that the PM can do both and want him to prioritise the economy. The scare tactics being used and the regulatory actions taken will have an immediate impact on high streets, the hospitality industry and further devastation for the aviation industry. Uh, everybody should look at the, uh, what's already happened in the first phases of this uh, pandemic and be in, in no doubt that it is possible that such a thing could happen again. And it's precisely to avoid that that we are taking the steps now that we are, because a stitch in time saves nine. And there'll be far more damage to the economy uh, throughout our country uh, if we failed uh, to control the virus now. This leader holds a different view and worries economic concerns are compromising the effort to save lives. We mustn't be hamstrung in essential public health decisions by the lack of necessary economic mitigations. And there is a danger that what starts to hold us back is not the public health analysis, but financial limitations. So I'll be writing to the Prime Minister today, and I hope constructively, because I recognise that the economic implications of all of this for the Treasury are not easy. Nicola Sturgeon wants even stricter rules. If she could, she'd like to close all bars, restaurants and pubs in Scotland. But that comes with a price tag. You'd have to extend the furlough scheme. And it's already cost the British taxpayer an eye-watering £39 billion. And as for Mr Johnson, he does want to try to save lives now, but he doesn't want to ruin them in the future by destroying the British economy. The Labour leader wants a more joined-up approach. Different leaders of different nations have gone in different directions. Do you think Boris Johnson went far enough? There are obviously different rules now in England, Scotland and Wales. And one of my criticisms of the Prime Minister is that he hasn't held the four nations um, together, barely had meetings with the leaders in the devolved um, administrations, and it would be far better if there's one set of rules across the whole of the United Kingdom. The furlough scheme, you want more support for people if they can't get back to work. As the government is introducing new health restrictions, it's phasing out economic support. Businesses now, as the result of these new restrictions, are going to be put under huge strain and you owe it to them to put a support mechanism in place. And the government really should have done that yesterday. They may do tomorrow, an economic response being worked up by the Prime Minister and his Chancellor, who will set out a new plan to try to protect jobs. But the autumn budget now cancelled as the government braces for more economic turbulence ahead. Beth Rigby, Sky News, Westminster.